I'm looking at alternative fruit because uh, of certain situations that have developed with I get in the right diseases and insects have been showing up and affecting our standard fruit crops. Uh, this is from fruit, fruit and Spice Garden, if you ever get a chance to get over there. I know when I moved from uh, Ohio about 20 years ago, one of the things I liked to do was when we vacationed here was go get some oranges and squeeze some fresh orange juice. Uh, and then, uh, oh, this one's out of order here, but when uh, citrus greening hit, we uh, had some problems with uh, the flavor. Whoever has their microphone on, if you could just mute your microphone, we can hear some background noise. So we have other alternative fruit we can grow. Um, looking at, uh, does anybody have a, an idea of what is second to citrus with the amount of acres, 447,000 acres at its peak, 612,000 in 1998. Uh, most people would say mangoes perhaps, but no, you're wrong. Avocados came in about 7,400 acres. And surprisingly, long ends ahead of mangoes, uh, 1,300 acres. Mangoes close there. I think these numbers have shifted due to several uh, events, which I'll just go through real quickly. So uh, also we have a lot of lychee, pitaya, or dragon fruit, and guava. So um, citrus greening hit real hard. And this is, if you drive towards the center of Florida, you'll see uh, what's left of some of these citrus groves. You can tell who's looking after their groves and who isn't. So we've lost about 50% of the acreage. Um, the peak being uh, in 1996, we had almost 857,000 acres, and now we're down to like 430,000 due to uh, the, the deadly citrus greening disease. Uh, the disease is spread by these tiny little plant hoppers. You'll see the little uh, waxy strands uh, of honeydew. It's semi-solid like honeydew, like Dairy Queen, instead of a liquid honeydew. Uh, they'll attack the new growth and inoculate it with uh, the bacterium. And just for you people, it's still hanging on to some citrus trees. The leaf on the left here, we have a classic symptom called blotchy model, where you have irregular dark and green patches, or if, if it's a manganese or nutrient deficiency, uh, you'll have it somewhat symmetrical. Um, if you look at both sides of the leaf, what you see on one side is the same as what you see on the other side of that midrib, that mid vein. Uh, so if we wanted to grow avocados, uh, because the citrus trees are dying, we're, um, look, I was surprised to see that uh, we have 7,400 acres. That's a $55 million industry. But uh, current update, due to this laurel wilt disease, uh, we've lost 125,000 trees, uh, about 17% of the acreage. And that's uh, according to Jeff Wozlewski, uh 2020 information. So and a lot of people have bad opinions about the Florida avocados, but some are absolutely delicious and have a high oil content like the Haas. Um, Choquette being one, I think, and, and there's many others. But uh, this uh, red bay am ambrosia beetle invaded, um, started in the Carolinas and then moved its way down rapidly, the, down rapidly uh, the coastline. And we can see the tunnels. Here's the beetle here. The beetles have spores on them. The spores grow. They are essentially farming. Uh, the fungal growth, and that fungal growth clogs up the pipelines and uh, kills avocado trees. And this is what's been happening in Homestead. That was an avocado grow. Uh, dead giveaway sign is these cigarette-like ashes. The beetles kick out the frass and the fungal hyphae connect the sawdust or frass all together, and it's like a 
cigarette ash sticking out uh, the tree trunk. If we haven't had any rain, uh, those are quite diagnostic. The uh, ashes will cling on for a while. So uh, yeah, detected in 2002 coastal areas of Georgia. Uh, it's killing our two native Perseus species. That's Red Bay and um, Swamp Bay Persia. And they pretty much killed all of those individual trees. It's been super devastating for those native trees. So possible tolerance uh, varieties, according to uh, Dr. Steve Brady, and this will be in the presentation if uh, you can download it later. So uh, some of these uh, I'm, are fairly new varieties, I guess. Uh, cool bamboo, I don't even know how to say some of these. Um, so Steve could elaborate on those. Uh, lychees, uh, an alternative. However, we came up uh, with a problem last year, last two years, where there's a mite, a tiny mite. If you see lychee at farm uh, markets, don't buy them if they have these little brown fuzzy Klingons. That's uh, what they call an arenium, or kind of like a, a gall-like growth. Felt, it's like felt. Um, and it's just loaded with these tiny little areophyid mites. So those have been quarantined um, in Lee County. And importantly, if you're interested in other varieties you can grow, this is a good reference. If you go to uh, EDIS on the website, just Google EDIS and uh, Jonathan Crane's one of the main authors, you will end up with several publications. And if you go to the Fruitscapes website at Trek, uh, there's also some videos and information, all, all kinds of uh, fruits that you can try. And then finally, I kind of stumbled on to this truly tropical YouTube website. She's got hundreds of varieties, mostly on mangoes, some other fruits as well, but uh, fairly short videos and, and lots of good information. She's up uh, on the East Coast, Delray Beach. But check those out, very educational. And we've been promoting alternative fruits since uh, 2009. We usually have a citrus class in March, followed by the mango class in July. And then the old JAMA's class in September, but since I'm leaving the end of July, we'll see how that rolls out for this year. So JAMA's, uh, you were wondering probably what that stands for, but it's just an acronym for some of the fruit that are ripe then. Join local fruit clubs. Uh, the Bonita Springs and Collier Fruit Growers have merged into, uh, morphed into the fruit growers of Southwest Florida search for their website. They have good information there, thanks to uh, Roger Taylor and some of those people. And if you wanna learn more, get over to the Homestead Nurseries, including Fruit and Spice Park, and then uh, Pine Island. Also, uh, there's several nurseries over there. So uh, we've done fruit classes in the past at the Botanical Garden, and they have programming there. And uh, often, in the past, uh, David Bird, the mango man, and uh, Jenny Bird, his wife, has prepared testing, tastings and helped help teach us about how to grow mangoes in Southwest Florida. And I love this lady's enthusiasm. That's what we like to uh, promote with our audiences. Unfortunately, we can't see that today, but uh, we'll get back to it hopefully next year where we have real tastings. Forget this virtual stuff. Uh, Stephen was one of the featured fruit hunters in this video. I urge you to uh, get it. It's very entertaining and it'll get you jazzed up for trying different kinds of fruit. Very exciting. 